Hey guys, my name is Rob and uh, welcome back to the video game beat. This is for the week of October 12th through the 16th. Uh, I'm, I'm actually really excited to be back. I know we took last week off a little bit. I was celebrating a wedding uh, with my family, but we're back again for this week. Don't worry, I'm coming with the hard hitting news. I gathered majority of the stuff on Thursday, which is the day before the day that I'm recording. And I thought, man, this is gonna be a pretty slow week. But then Friday hit, and then we got a couple heavy hitters that I was like, oh, okay, cool. This is going to spice things up a bit more. So uh, before we get into the show, remember, guys, the Video Game Beat is a weekly podcast that covers the week's big gaming news. If you like it, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, and share with your friends. But let's just say you don't want to watch the video. Don't forget, go on to the podcast services while you're shopping, while you're chilling, while you're playing some games or trying to just get some more stats for your Avengers guy so that way you're ready for the raid. Put on the podcast. Just listen. You don't need to watch. Just listen on any podcast service that you like to use. It's on every single podcast service out there. And if it's not, then hit me up. You guys can reach out to us through the Ambitious Casual Twitter account. That's at Ambitious Casual. Very simple. Hit us up. If you guys want to ask us questions, give us your comments, anything like that, give us a follow, share with your friends, and let's just jump right into the weekly gaming news. Now, for this week... And so there's a lot of PlayStation stuff. So buckle up and uh, pretty exciting things. And a couple of things that are like, eh, I like the first one. We're just going to get this one out of the way. Um, this comes from IGN's Matt Kim. Uh, PS3, PSP, and Vita will stop selling through web and mobile. This is really interesting because of the fact that um, PlayStation is obviously going uh, about cleaning up the store a bit, getting things ready for the big launch of the PS5. And so with that comes some changes to the PlayStation Store. And so coming uh, onto the original story by Matt Kim, it says the PlayStation Store experience is about to receive an overhaul soon as Sony makes plans to limit what's available to purchase on the web and mobile versions of its digital store. In an email sent to PlayStation development partners, which IGN has independently verified, Sony says that the starting on October 19th for web and October 28th for mobile, again, October 19th for the web, October 28th for mobile, certain digital products will no longer be available for purchase. Now, that includes PlayStation game, PlayStation 3 games and add-ons, PSP games and add-ons, PS Vita games and add-ons, apps, themes, avatars, all that yada yada. It obviously seems like they're wanting to go and just clean things up and make things a bit more user-friendly and take all that clutter off. Um, but with that, what's really interesting about it is that there is... With them taking this off the store and there was a pretty big uh, update that came up for the PlayStation 4 Pro, which is the update 8.00. I have to say, the PlayStation Store was running much quicker than it ever has before. I've always had a big problem with the store because you always clicked into the store and then while you're there, you're like, bro, it's taking forever to load. I can't, it's taking me forever to get to what I want. Things take forever to populate the store. And so recently when this update hit, I wasn't even trying to do anything. I was just trying to get on the store to go see what was released for that week or whatever. And the moment I got on, it just dawned on me. I was like, wait a minute, this store is running a lot faster than usual. Things are loading up a much, a lot faster than usual. So it's just interesting that they take all this clutter away and things start running a lot better. And I'm not, I'm not opposed to that. Now you can get these games. If you are wanting a PS3 game, PSP game or Vita game, there's going to be very few of you out there, but if you do want them, you have to go onto their respective consoles to buy those games. So if you want a PS3 game, gotta have you have a three, you have to have a PS3 and then buy it from the PS3 store there and so on for the PSP and for the Vita as well. So, so long to these classic consoles and their games, you can only buy them on their respective consoles themselves. But hey, that means we get a much faster, cleaner store with a lot less clutter. I'm all for that, all for that. Um, Another thing, this comes straight from Game Informer. Now you go over there, they have a whole, whole breakdown of news regarding this because these just hit this was their cover story uh honestly you can go to gameinformer.com slash miles and then that's where you can find all these stories that they have they covered everything miles morales so i don't want to go way too deep into it because 
some people you don't want spoilers you know but there's a couple things i do want to uh you know take some hints on uh, a couple things are this um uh, they talk about miles first boss battle uh nothing uh very special it's rhino i mean we we got to face rhino in the main game so miles first big boss battle is rhino um you get to obviously they show off a bit more details and give more in-depth uh story of miles morales is spider-man and they showed some clips and what's cool about it is that just the actions and the way that miles is moving he's very clumsy he's brand new he's trying to learn the moves of being spider-man quote unquote so it's really cool to see someone or see um insomniac take on a miles that's kind of like the miles that we saw in spider-man into the spider-verse a fantastic movie one of the best movies that year it, it released and they're kind of adopting that, putting it on this Miles, but obviously giving it a bit of a twist. Miles' mother is running for mayor and things like that. So I love it. It's cool. I can't wait to play the game. I've kind of been trying to hold back a bit on a lot of the details uh, because I kind of want to experience it as I play the game itself. They went in a bit more on the stealth and combat. And then lastly, this thing was taking, taking social media by storm. Uh, and so if you didn't, if you missed it, uh, they announced that there's a, a a side quest that you play as Miles and you go and you have to save this cat and return it to a bodega. Bodega is like a corner store at um, New York, kind of like a convenience store kind of thing. Now you return the bodega, you turn the cat to the bodega, but then it seems like the cat wants to hang out with you and thus creates Spider Cat, who's kind of like an at like a, a secondary fighter with you. Like you don't get to control them. Uh, verbatim but it's the fact that you go and you're fighting and he'll help out and fight with your kind of thing so it's a cool little easter egg um that they showed off and i can't wait to see what else they have Are, is there outfits for um spider cat i have no idea but that's cool that they're in doing this uh kind of thing one thing that they did show though is they showed off a couple suits. Uh, there was a, a white suit that looked super, super cool. I'm going to be showing it off. And uh, But there's one suit in particular that really, really grabbed my attention. And it's like this very techno looking suit. It's going to be on the screen. Um, for the podcast uh, listeners, it's almost as if like he has like this cyberpunk jack red jacket on with a helmet on that is like a, a screen in and of itself. And it's a digital screen that can literally alter his like uh his spidey face features or whatever so it's just such a cool cool design and it, it it's i love the fact that they're just playing with us now and i love i've always loved the big thing in regards to any spider-man game is the fact that there's different suits uh, who doesn't like that so the fact that we get to play as miles enters a new story get a whole new slew of suits i'm very very excited for what they have in store for the ps5 but talking about ps5 let's just slide right in to the next set of news which is the first look at the ps5 ui this comes straight from the playstation blog hideaki nishino he uh opens up the video it was a video that they published on youtube um it was kind of like a state of play but it only covered the ui um so with that uh hideaki and uh, shino he kind of started the video off talking about it a little bit and then sit shuman went on and finished the rest of the video and we got to see a little bit of the ui so a couple things here uh one of the big points is that they start the ui up and it's what we saw at the beginning or not in the beginning i'm sorry it was in the middle of the playstation 5 showcase you could have missed it because it was real quick but it was really fast. It was a couple seconds. You saw it and then you heard the sound of the startup noise and then boom, went away. So it obviously started off with that. You get to see the startup screen, enter it in, pick the profile, go in. And the whole aesthetic is dark with the gradient effect and a light effect coming from the top left corner. And just you get to see just the light trail effect just flowing throughout from left to right. And it just it's soothing. You know, this PlayStation at their best. They're really good when it comes to these startup things. So I I didn't expect anything less than that. But uh, the moment they open up the game uh, or the PlayStation and go into the menu, we're first greeted with the screen and uh, Sackboy's Big Adventure is playing. And with that, they didn't go right into the game. They showed off a couple things. And uh, one is what they call activities. And it's over there by the control center automatically. 
on the activities, you get to see different things. One, it shows off the levels that you're playing within the game that you have suspended or that you are playing at the moment. And you get to see the percentage of completion of the level that you're playing right now. So in the level that they were on or recently on in Sackboy, it was a big adventure level. That's what it was called. It shows the, the card for the game. Now, a couple things. The card itself tells you the completion uh, percentage of the level. It shows 33% on here. And then below it, it says the name of the level. It was called a big adventure. And then underneath that, it tells you based off of the PlayStation's ability to uh, kind of, I guess, find the average. I don't know how they get this information. Either it's from the developers themselves or the PS5 is able to generate that kind of information itself. It tells you there's about 10 minutes left in the game that you are wanting to play or in the level that you're playing. So a little bit of friendly uh, helps and hints along the way as well. It uh, can show through this uh, thing called game help on how to find certain items that you're having trouble finding. But supposedly that's gonna come from a developer to developer uh, consistency. So I guess not all developers are gonna be you know, given the task to do this. Some of them might just skip it and some of them might do it as well. But if anything, it's easier access to those who don't want to pull out their phone search up a youtube video and then somehow find the video that they need scroll to it and then find the exact part that they're on to find the thing that they need so i guess this is just a more user-friendly ability to interact and take not take the player out of what they are doing which is cool and all but one thing that i did have a problem with in regards to the activities and just the cards that they were showing the activity cards the only thing about it is that I hope that you're able to customize that in any way that you want. Um, I might not always want to see these cards the moment I op uh, re turn on my PlayStation from sleep mode all the time. And I might even want to take these off. I might not even care about the levels or the percentage of the level or things like that at all. So I'm hoping I can clean up the UI however I want to, if possible. You might not be able to, but you never know. Uh, and along with that, we got to see a little bit of what the PlayStation Store also would look like. They said that the PlayStation Store is no longer going to be like its own standalone app. It's going to be integrated into the software in and of itself, which is cool. What does what does that mean? That obviously means a, a quicker, a much snappier store. Um, but obviously, they showed a bit of the media bar as well. And we get to see a couple of things. Um, everything is going in the direction of Netflix. I don't know if you noticed that. It's these big screens. Everything is practically taken up by the actual game that you are playing or the game that they're promoting. And then all the widgets are a lot smaller compared to the PS4 version. So they obviously want to make this look great on your 4K TV with such high fidelity screenshots or images created by the developers to show off on the store. So, I mean, I'm not against that. Um, it's cool. I like it. It's clean. I heard some people saying that the widgets are too small. I don't think so. I think they look perfectly fine to me, honestly. They're all square um, and a lot more. They are a lot smaller compared to the PS4, but I like that. I, li I like to see a full screen of an image. It just looks neat. It looks nice. I really enjoy that. Um, but other than that, we really didn't get to see much other than sharing a screenshot, um, party, that kind of thing so not too exciting i wish we got to see a bit more like trophies or just other aspects of it and uh, what's even funny is that when you got to the end of the video they were like all right we're running out of time and you're kind of like well this is a pre-recorded video so i'm not running out of time it seems like you're the one who's running out of time or whatever you're the one who's choosing how long this video is going to be so it just seemed like they held back information that they just didn't really need to hold back but they just did it anyway because they wanted to which is a bit of a bummer but you know, it is what it is. It's whatever. Um, all right, moving on. Let's get on to the rest of the news. Something big, okay? Xbox and GameStop have teamed up. This is something that has been brought up before, uh, that there was an agreement that, a multi-year agreement that came about between Microsoft and GameStop. By the way, this comes straight from The Verge, uh, Chaim Gardenberg. And um, supposedly, this is what the deal consists of, okay? It is a new revenue sharing deal that is said to give GameStop a percentage of any digital sales made on those Xbox consoles, including digital downloads of full games and DLC 
in-game microtransactions and sub and any subscriptions which would seem to include things like xbox live gold and xbox game pass now we need to stop for a bit okay this is on the outside you might be thinking to yourself okay cool whatever that uh, I, I guess they're teaming up for something but when you stop and think about it this is really really such a power move by uh, xbox and i know a lot of people like to say that power moves and these big radical moves only come from the losers because they're trying to obviously win people back but either or they're making some great moves man buying bethesda now this gamestop thing here's what's going on okay if i walked into a gamestop retailer and i bought an xbox series x from them an xbox console let's just say xbox console from them the fact that I bought that game from them. They're going to get a percentage of every single digital sale that I get off of that console. Now, it doesn't mean that they're like, I guess, um, keeping up with all the data of what I'm buying and things like that. But on average, they're able to kind of see, okay, these many consoles are getting bought by GameStop and then falls to this much money. So they're going to get this percentage. Practically, Xbox is trying to save GameStop. And you might be asking yourself, why would they do that? Well, here's the reason why, okay? If you're someone who is going into a GameStop and you're like, hey, I know the next generation of video games is out. I like video games. I'm just, I'm not loyal to a console. What console should I get? Think to yourself, what console is that GameStop employee going to recommend to you? They're going to recommend to you an Xbox because the higher ups are gonna tell them, sell Xboxes because we can make more money, which means that we get to keep our jobs and we get to, it's a new revenue stream for GameStop. And it's such a weird, crazy power move of the fact that customers are now gonna go into GameStops and they're going to be recommended Xboxes now. They're not gonna really wanna recommend a PlayStation because then they can't make money off of PlayStations. They can make money off of Xboxes though, even if the consumer is buying digital games and not buying physical games from the GameStop themselves because GameStop is gonna be getting a percentage of sales based off of the fact that you are buying an Xbox from their store. That is mind blowing. And that is such a power move in regards to GameStop, I mean Xbox, that this is something that they're even considering. They didn't have to do something like this. But one of the big things when it comes to consoles is brick and mortar stores you know uh, a lot of people order online yes but a lot of people still go into brick and mortar stores your retail stores to buy technology to buy these consoles and who's to say that they team up with somebody else best buy or whatever who's to say a playstation does the same thing i don't know i can't even picture playstation even doing this i don't think they even think about doing this but the fact that xbox is doing something like this is very very crazy it's such a crazy move that to me it's just like hey gamestop let's team up multi-year deal here's some money but here's what you gotta do promote our consoles because if you promote our consoles and someone buys a console from your store you get some money on the digital side of things as well it's just crazy it's such a it's such a very interesting like a tactic to even try to face your competitor with it's really, really weird, guys. And I, I, when I saw that, I was like, there's no way they're doing this. But they're doing it. They're doing it. And they're crazy for doing it. Along the stories of Xbox, we get the Xbox Series X launch lineup. This comes from Polygon, uh, Michael Warder. Um, the next-gen Xbox will have 31 games on launch day. Now, let's go through them real quick. Um, and some of these games will support Microsoft's uh, smart delivery program, which obviously allows you on the day of to upgrade it to the next gen version of that game so uh here's some of the games some of them say xbox game pass and smart delivery outside them i'm not going to read all that because it's going to be a lot but i'm going to have the link to this story in the description so don't forget to go down there and check it out starting from the top uh we have assassin's creed valhalla borderlands 3 uh bright mirror 1.0 cuisine royale dead by daylight devil Mo devil may cry 5 special edition dirt 5 and listed evergate the Falconeer, Fortnite, Forza Horizon 4, Gears 5, Gears Tactics, Grounded, King Oddball, Maneater, Manifold Garden, NBA 2K21, Observer, System Redux, Ori and the Will of the Wisps, Plane Coaster, Sea of Thieves, Tetris Effect Connected, 
The Tourist, War Thunder, Warhammer, Chaos Bane Slayer Edition, Watch Dogs Legions, WRC9 FIA World Rally Championship, Yakuza Like a Dragon, and Yes, Your Grace. Those are the 31 games that are coming to the Xbox Series X titles on day one. Um, cool. I mean, a lot of these, we kind of expected them to come anyways. Your Assassin's Creed, your, um, what's, uh, where was it at? I totally lost it. Where is that game at? Bro, where's the game I was even thinking about? Uh, where's the game at? Watch Dogs Legions. There we go. Sorry. I don't even know how I lost that. There's so much on here. So we expected Watch Dogs Legion, we expected Yakuza, we expected Assassin's Creed, but here's a couple more that are coming to the store right away. So, hey, if you're getting an Xbox Series X, here are 31 games that would be there on day one for you that are Xbox Series X compatible. So that way you can enjoy some of that crisp next-gen gameplay. Don't worry, guys. They got you covered, okay? Story number four. We got Sonic the Hedgehog and Fall Guys. This comes from Game Informer's Liana Rupert. Uh, this is a strange one, dude. When I saw this going around on Twitter, I honestly thought for a second, this is a mock-up. This isn't real. There's no way they actually made this or put this in the game. But it is real. And it's... It's strange, dude. Um, The article says the Sonic skin is coming to Fall Guys on October 14th. That is already a couple of days past the day that I'm recording this. Uh, fully equipped with these iconic red shoes, white gloves, and while not an exact replica... Obviously, this is the only latest crossover that in-game Jelly Beans have seen, and it surely won't be the last. This is the biggest little piece of content that they've given. Um, they've done things like this before with uh, other video games within the realm of the Devolver uh, publishing suite of games. But this is the first time they're going outside of their realm of things and just picking a, a random character from a different publisher and being like, hey, here we go. Let's do it. So... It's really cool. It's very interesting. I know you need 10 crowns to unlock everything about it. But hey, this is super cool. I enjoyed it. Uh, I kind of fell off of um, Fall Guys. Pun intended. And um, But seeing this, I was like, should I jump back on? Should I try and get the Sonic skin? But I was like, no, we're not going to do it. Just because of the fact that I don't even, I've never won. I've never won a round in Fall Guys. It's so hard to win a round. So I was like, you know what? There goes that dream. Forget it. Uh, we're never going to achieve that. So, hey, that's a little bit cool. I can't wait to see what other crossovers they have in the bank. I know that the game blew up so quickly that they have to be in talks with a lot of people to get their stuff on there. So we'll see as time goes on what else gets ruled out. This is a cool one, dude. This one has me super excited. I don't even know why. Story number five. This comes from GameSpot, Matt Paget. Analog Duo, man. Analog Duo is a new console by the company Analog. It is a new 1080p retro console for Turbo Graphics and PC Engine fans. I don't know why this grabbed my attention. I've slowly become an Analog fan within the past year, just because of the fact that whenever they first announced the Analog Pocket, which is their modern retro console for uh, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Advance SP games. I jumped on it. I have mine pre-ordered for next uh, for next year, which that's when they release. But um, they do a lot of these things for NES and things like that. And this one is the newest one that for some reason grabbed my attention. And the only reason why is because I remember growing up on an old Microsoft desktop that we had as a kid. I would play Sonic Adventure DX. That was director's cut on it all the time. And in my mind, thinking to myself, if I had that actual disc to this day, I will be able to pop that disc into the new analog duo and play that childhood game on there with a controller. That just blew my mind and that made me super excited. It's such a sleek design, $200. Uh, it gets released in 2021. Uh, they have a black design and a white design. They're very, very slim and very, very sleek. They look beautiful. Analog never does anything but the best when it comes to their consoles. So yeah, this was a cool bit of news that I saw that, I mean, again, I've started respecting analog more and more. Not that I never respected them, but they became more um, relevant in my life just because of the fact that they started making things that I liked. And, uh, you know, they're famous for the 8 bit uh controllers and things like that. So with them doing things like this, man, they keep bringing the magic. They keep bringing the things that people don't really are asking for. 
But the moment you see it, you're like, oh man, I, I kind of need that. I kind of want that. So props to analog. I love them. Uh, hey, if they want to send one this way, uh, send me an analog duo, man. I like to try it out uh, because I'm really excited. I love everything analog. And uh, if you want to send me an analog pocket early to try it out, unbox that baby. That'd be legit. I really would love to have those hands on. I already have like seven Game Boy games ready to go uh, to play them and stream them on Twitch. So stay tuned for those things like that, guys. But yeah, I'm so excited for Analog Pocket. And for the last story, it's a sad one. The reason why it's sad is because of the fact that I was getting into this game more and more as uh, time went on. When Avengers came out, I played it for a little bit and enjoyed it a little bit. It was okay. I kind of wanted to play it for the reason of the multiplayer aspect of it, but I didn't really have friends to play it with. So I only played the campaign and not that I got tired of it, but I just wasn't getting what I wanted right away. So I dropped, I dropped off of it and then uh, it dawned on me that I can just skip the story and just go straight into the multiplayer aspect of it. So I jumped on, played that for a little bit and I was playing it for literally six hours straight. And by the time I was done, I called my brother up and I was like, yo, would you play this Marvel's Avengers game? And he was like, yes. I said, okay, I'm buying it for you. Bought it for him. We both have been playing. And the game is awesome, man. It's the outside of the campaign. The game is super cool being played the way that they kind of intended it to be played, which is the multiplayer aspect of raids and missions and just looting a bunch and a bunch to level your character up. So that way you can become a higher level and reach that level. So you can be part of the raid and blah, blah, blah. And I fell back in I fell in love with that game again. I fell back in love with that game again. And I was looking forward to, you know, whenever I get the PS5 and the Xbox Series X to the upgrades to next gen and to dip into uh some new DLC that's gonna be re be released every single month. And the first one is this month with Kate Bishop. But the unfortunate thing is this Kate Bishop's DLC has been delayed, and along with that, the Xbox Series X and S and PS5 versions of the game have been delayed to later next year. So uh, this comes straight from an Avengers blog and uh, Crystal Dynamics studio head writes. And th again, this is from IGN, Matt Perslow. He writes this out and uh, the, the, the Crystal Dynamics studio head, Scott Emmis, this is what he says. He apologized for the slight delay to the Kate Bishop DLC. Again, this still might come out this year, but for sure the release of the updated next-gen versions are delayed to next year. Um, he said, with this in mind, we decided to push Kate Bishop's Operation launch back a bit out of October, said Amos, but no new date was given for this first new character. Um, ad additionally, Amos explained that next-gen update being pushed back. We've also made the decision to shift our PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X dash s launch to next year to ensure that we give our team the time to deliver a next gen experience showcasing all that this game is meant to be um it's sad but if anything he does say that on next gen consoles you can still play the game on a next gen console it will run better off of the new hardware you're just not going to get those next gen upgrades which to me when he said that and reminded me of that, I was like, oh, you know what? You're right. I guess I'm not, I'm not going to complain too much about it. And on top of that, guys, man, I feel like Avengers has been really getting a, a lot of slack, like a lot of flack lately. People being like, oh, there's barely any content. And in my mind, I'm like, this game just came out for a month and everyone's already saying there's no content. It's such a strange world we live in and where video games now all of a sudden need to be so hyper updated with new content all the time, every weekend. To me, I'm like, Guys, there's human beings behind this. They're taking the time. They want to give the best product out as they can. I'm pretty sure I know that there's a lot of bugs and problems with the game at first when it first re released. But again, you got to know there's deadlines, dude. They have to get this game out so that way they can get their money back and pay their employees and blah, 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 blah. So, hey, Avengers game, it's fun. I enjoyed it. Props to them. Props to the developers and everyone that worked on it. They did such a great job. And um, hey, you want to delay to make it better? There's nothing better that you get out of a delay than a better game. You don't usually get a bad game when you delay a game because that never really happens. So, hey, take all your time that you want on the Xbox Series X, S, and PS5 versions. And, uh, hey, if you need to push back K-Bishop a little bit, maybe to November, that's fine. I can wait. Um, but all I know is that beginning of November, November 13th, when I get the PS5, I'm playing Avengers on the PS5. Updated a bit, running a bit better because of the new next-gen hardware. But that's it, guys. 
Thanks for listening to the Video Game Beat. Thanks for watching the Video Game Beat on YouTube. And uh, those who are watching, if you guys liked what you watched, hit the thumbs up button. Don't forget to share with your friends. And those who are listening on podcast services, don't forget to rate on the podcast service that you are listening on. It helps people find the podcast easier. And share this on your with your friends, either through social media or, you know, through a letter when you're in school, you know. Get one letter, pass it down to Amy, and then Amy looks at it and then passes it down to Mike, and then Mike looks at it and passes it down to Jeffrey. And Jeffrey looks at it, and then he finally gives it to Cam, who's at the very, very back, and says, hey, check out the video game beat. It's on Spotify. And then that's how you get both of all your friends in that row in that class to jump on to the video game beat. So yeah, there we go. Thanks for listening, guys. Again, I stream on Twitch. It's at twitch.tv forward slash ambitious casual. If there's anything in today's news that you enjoyed, let me know down in the comments below. I want to see y'all's reactions. I want to communicate with you guys. I want to talk with you guys. If you have any questions about things, you have any concerns, you want to give me some more, you know, questions to answer for the next episode, we'll put them down in the comments as well. And uh, if you're not watching on the YouTube channel, we'll just go straight to the Twitter. That is twitter.com slash ambitious casual. I think that's how that works. Twitter.com forward slash ambitious casual. Send your comments, send your questions, send your concerns. I'll answer them on the show next week. And uh, yeah, again, thanks for listening, guys. It means a lot to me. Really appreciate this. Till next time, keep playing those video games. Peace out. And uh, hey, check out the streams. I can really use a bit more eyes on the streams. I'm trying to build that up a bit, baby. Please, please.